Hi everyone, um, I'm making this video to as a thanks to all of the people ha that has donated money to help us out in this situation and also to let you know what's been going on with us and what is going to happen. Um, first of all, like we're really, really thankful of everyone who has donated and everybody who has given us the best wishes and everybody who has collaborated, giving us food and being there and basically we are so thankful for the support and the community that has raised up to help us out in this, in this situation. Um, I'm going to give you how everything transpired and what's going to happen next and what the doctors have said. Okay, as all of you know, I, I had the mastectomy, the radical breast mastectomy on September 19th. Now, why did I went for a mastectomy and what type of cancer it was and like what, what happened exactly? Okay, first of all, the cancer that I had is called adenocystic. It's a really, really rare type of cancer. So rare that when I went to the oncologist for the first time, the options were um, either going to do chemo first and then surgery, or surgery first and chemo later. Now, both options had their pros and cons. And there was a reason why I chose to go to, my, to do the surgery first. The oncologist told me, like, plainly, your cancer is so rare that I'm not sure if the chemotherapy might, is going to work. The advantages of doing the chemotherapy first is that we will be able to see if it works or not, and if it does, then the radical mastectomy is not going to be as painful or as extensive as it, it might be otherwise. And by that was that it's not only, it was not only the breast that was affected, but also some of the nodes under my armpit. Now, the risk of doing the surgery instead of first was that if they, every, the tumor being so big as it was and also affecting under the armpit was that removing the nodes under their armpit might affect the movement of my arm. Doing the chemotherapy first and if it worked that might have reduced the size of everything and it might have been that so you might have been less invasive. The cons of that was that of course there was no guarantee that it might work. The time frame for that was a month and a half. There were, in a month, there were going to be two sessions of chemotherapy, and with those two sessions, they will be able to see if it works or not. If it didn't, then I will have to have wait another 15 days before the surgery, before me going to surgery. On the other side was Surgery will be take everything out, but the cons was that it will might affect my arm, the movement of my arm. So when I was debating that, I thought, well, it's better to remove everything because the tumor was advancing so quickly that we were afraid that it might have be spraying to other parts of the body. So I was not willing to wait a month and a half in, in the hopes that a chemotherapy might work because there were no numbers given to me of how, what, what were the chances. So I thought, well, let's go for chemotherapy first, take everything out, and then we will see. So after the surgery, the surgery went really well. Uh, it did affect the movement of my arm. Right now, I have some exercises that I'm doing that require me, for example, putting both arms here and then having to put them under, over top of my head and 
with my left arm, I can only reach here. Also, I cannot do this, or this has it, the movement of my arms being impaired somehow. I will need a lot of physiotherapy for my, the movement of my arm to return as it was. So after the surgery, um, right now I'm feeling really well, except for my arm, it's everything, I'm feeling really fine. The uh, incision that they made were from this part here under the arm here. So it's quite a scar that I'm going to have, but I'm planning on having a tattoo in two years because that's the time frame required for me to have everything heal up. So what's now, what's going on now? Uh, well, I already have the appointment with the surgeon, the follow-up appointment. She was really happy of how everything well went, and I'm really happy too because, yeah, there was no complications whatsoever, and she did the best job that she could do. So, really happy about that. Then I had the uh, appointment with the oncologist. Now, the deal was for me to go to chemotherapy after the surgery and honestly i didn't want to have to go to do chemo unless i really really needed to and according to the papers that they gave me the surgeon gave me of how everything was uh, laid out after the surgery and how everything went it stated that they took everything so when i went to see the oncologist i was like okay so what's how am I, do I really need to go to chemotherapy? And he said, well, I am suggesting to go to chemotherapy just because the tumor was so big and it was spreading so quickly that we are not sure if it traveled through the blood. There might be a chance that it might have traveled to the blood, to, through the blood and you might have it still in your system and chemotherapy will take care of that and I was like, yeah, but you in the first place told me that you were not sure that chemotherapy might work. And he was like, yeah, we're not sure. And he was like, he was really nice. He was listening to us. And we expressed that or reaction to chemotherapy. And he understood that because he said it to us, I, unfortunately, your case being so rare, there's no numbers I can give you to let you know if the chemotherapy might work. Uh, like there's a chance that you might have, have it in your system, yes, chemotherapy might work or might not. So when I balance that between um, how the quality of life that I have versus the maybe you have it still in your system and maybe chemotherapy might work, I was like, well, I prefer to have more blood tests and more and have more follow-up appointments to make sure like everything is fine. And he agreed to that. When I asked him, well, why not having my blood test, another blood test to make sure that it's not in, in my system. And he expressed that it will, it will not show up right away. So for the moment right now, uh, he ordered another blood test, not because it will show up in, in the blood, but because he was concerned of other point that was discussed before me going to surgery. Before the surgery, there were many tests done to me, like x-rays, CT scans, so on and so forth. And in the CT scan, when they did it, they saw my lungs and they saw that there were really tiny, tiny particles of something in the lungs. They were so tiny that it didn't appear in any other test and they were so tiny that they couldn't know what it was in the CT scan. So he ordered another blood test for me to be able to get another CT scan just to make sure that that's nothing. We're thinking it might be nothing just because well, they work as a carpenter, so I might have 
you know, dust or whatever, right? So there's a high possibility that that's what it is. So that CT scan is going to be on the first week of December. Uh, if the blood test runs positive, that they can have another CT scan. So where are we now? Well, I'm happy. Like everything's been going great. I still, as I told you at the beginning, have not regained um, really great movement of my arm, which limits my ability to work at all. Like I talked to my mom the other day and she went, well, why don't you be a secretary? And like, well, because I cannot type. <laughs> like I can type for five minutes. Like I have to drag my arm to the keyboard, type, and after five minutes, my arm is really tired and start hurting like crazy. So I have to stop. So that limits like anything that I can do for the moment. Um, right now it's just going to be physiotherapy and me resting because that's the other thing. Even though I'm feeling fine, if I go outside and start to do stuff by the four hour mark, I'm like done. I'm like starting to be really tired. And that's part of the process of healing. That's one of the things that the nurses told me like, Yes, you need to get out to take the sun, but do not overdo it because people that overdo it then end up having to be a whole week on bed because it's it doesn't feel like much, but the body's tired of being trying to be reconstructing itself again and trying to make all the terminal systems work again. Now, why does the arm has been affected this much? Why, why did it affect it this much? Well, the node systems, basically how it was explained to me by the doctors was under the arm we have these sentinels that are is part of our immune system. Whatever infection that you have in the breast, if it tries to spread through the body, will go first through those sentinels and those sentinels will will block it with the nodes that we have there. The nodes, however, are attached to the nerve systems on, of the arm. When they took the, the cancer nodes, they don't, not only took the ones that were affected, they took more just to give a margin in case, in case of a spread. To, only take out what is called a negative margin, which is basically if you have um, a tumor of this size, they're going to cut this much. So they took 21 nodes, only two of those had cancer, which leaves 19 free of cancer, which is great because it means like it didn't spread that much. However, one of the nodes was the size of the tumor was um, was bigger than the, what they expected to be. Um, that's why that's that's one of the reasons why the chemotherapist was suggesting chemo because it was really big, and it has and it, they thought that it was just one, but they were two. So he was concerned about that. Right now, we are going to monitor myself, uh, trying to to see uh, like what monitor my body, see how it's responding, how everything's going. The chemotherapist, uh, chem chemotherapist gave me reading material of the type of drug that he was suggesting in case I wanted to go to chemo. And he was like, I, like it's fine if you don't want to go right now, take this home, Think about it. If by any point you decide to go through chemo, just call me, which was great. He was really, really nice. Uh, we were quite relieved about that. Um, other than that, like I, because of how my arm is, I will really, really appreciate if you can still support us because it's it's going to be less stressful at least like 
knowing that we don't have cancer, but still the, the issue is that at the moment, uh, one cannot get more hours to, uh, to get more hours in a job because still the movement of my arm li limits me of what I can do in the day. For example, I cannot shower myself alone yet. I cannot dress myself alone yet. I cannot try to reach top uh, on the top of the corpus because like I cannot do that type of movements yet. So he's helping me around the house. He's he's taking care of me. He's taking care of the house. He's taking care of the cats. He's going to work um, just uh, three days. And when he returns, like it's he's tired and and I understand and it's we are like I'm really really happy of having him but you have no you guys have no idea uh, he's been a great support but he he cannot do more I can, and I cannot ask him to do more that's why I'm asking you guys to keep helping us and and also like still being really really thankful of all the support that you guys have given us please don't forget us i know that one usually when people hear here oh well you're clean you don't need any more help well yes i'm clean and i wish i could return to work believe me i like working um it's sometimes a little bit frustrating for me seeing other ladies that have mastectomy but didn't have the radical part like that means like under the arm part and by the fourth week they are like going to the gym and taking boxing and I cannot do I cannot even raise my arm um, so anyways um, that's it f for me for now if anyone has any questions or are curious like we have we we have the um, physical evidence and pictures taken of how cancer progress and if anyone has one any information about it of how things went uh, what the doctor said or want more information or if you just want to talk about it because you're curious or you have other you know people that have that are going through cancer and you need to talk to someone i'm here in case you need to, or I can help you with some information. I'm not a doctor, but I'm a cancer survivor. Um, and that's it. Like, thank you so much, guys, for everything, and see you later.